Hello, one great earth. My name is Dan. I hope you are well today. We got a lot to get into today. Hopefully we'll only get to through all of it. Here we cover climate change and climate change related news. We start first out of Mexico City. Have this play. The rainy seasons arrived in Mexico City, and that is welcome because for months the city was facing a massive water shortage. But for many residents, the rain has just made water problems worse. Emily Green reports. After months of warnings that Mexico City could run out of water, the return of rain is a welcome sight. You can almost hear... Yeah, Mexico City had a zero day of running out of water. Hopefully this rain helps. You can almost hear a collective sigh of relief among Mexico City residents because the rain is filling the reservoirs that provide a large portion of the city's water supply. But rain is just one factor in a massive and complex crisis. I take a taxi to see Maria Cristina Palayas. Hola, que tal? Bien. ¿Y tú? Buen mira aquí. Palayas lives in Ecatepec, a working class city on the capital's northern edge. The last time I visited her, in February, the water that came out of her tap was dark brown and smelled of sewage. Now, when Palayas turns on the tap, the only thing that comes out is a sputtering sound. Now, no water comes out of the tap, she says, not even dirty water. So she leaves buckets out to collect the rainwater. And the rainy season, instead of alleviating her water problems, has triggered an even bigger concern, flooding. When it rains, the drainage system collapses and the water comes in from the street into our houses, she says. We walk over to her neighbor's house, where 77-year-old Hernan Lara lives. Pasar a ver cómo sí. He invites me into his house, which has flooded twice in the past week after heavy rains. Se metió por el baño. He says water Se from the street una... flooded the bathroom, a patio, and all of the bedrooms in the house. Everything that was in the bedroom closet is now on the bed. Clothes, suitcases, books, even a sewing machine. Nos pusimos a llorar. He says he and his wife cried when their house flooded. Meanwhile, they're still buying water every week to drink and take showers because nothing comes out of their tap. The situation feels nothing short of apocalyptic. So what's going on? How can Mexico City have flooding and a water shortage? The answer is chaos. Armando Alonso Beltran is an executive member of the Water Commission for the state of Mexico, which includes Ecatepec. He blames bad infrastructure. Most of it doesn't work. Which amount doesn't work? 80 percent? 80 percent doesn't work. So the first action is to repair what we already have. He says his first priority is to fix leaks in the pipelines and to update dilapidated treatment plants so that wastewater is cleaned and reused instead of discharged into rivers and lakes. Many people say, let's bring water. Let's produce more water. Let's make the wells more effective. But first, let's fix the huge problem that we have, that we don't treat water that we're losing it. For decades, the city has instead shipped in water from faraway reservoirs and pumped out water from an aquifer. But a prolonged drought has left the faraway reservoirs extremely dry. And Mexico City is pumping so much water out of the aquifer that the ground below the city is sinking and below ground water pipes. And this is important to note. The more you pump water out, the faster ground shrinks. Japan saw this coming and stopped pumping so much water out of their ground, allowing them to, their ground to stabilize. Mexico, this is not the same. It is in just due time. The aquifers collapse, ground collapses, causes all kinds of instability. Groundwater pipes and sewage systems are falling apart. The amount of water that rains cannot be efficiently drained through the 
sort of pipes that are under the streets of the urban fabric. Loretta Castro Guerra is an architect designing for water in Mexico City. She says a second issue is that Mexico City was built on top of a lake that was drained, which means the soil beneath the city is mostly clay. So even when it rains a lot, clay can't absorb the water. It's not that we don't have enough rain. Actually, we have quite a lot of rain. It's just that we're really mismanaging our water. Urban expansion has exacerbated the problem. Castro advocates for solutions that involve capturing and reusing rainwater. In Ecatepec, I visit a park that Castro designed with their firm. The park is carved into flat terraces and filled with volcanic rock. The idea is that when it rains, the water stays rains, the water stays in the park instead of spilling into the streets below, says Castro's colleague, Alan Perez. He says the terraces are like pools that hold the rainwater and then filter it to the aquifer below, slowly enough that the clay can absorb it. It's one of many initiatives that experts hope will alleviate the dual problem of water scarcity and flooding in this megalopolis. The question is, will those solutions come fast enough? For NPR News, I'm Emily Green in Mexico City. Very interesting Mexico City water crisis. Las Vegas, New Mexico. The city of Las Vegas canceled its 4th of July events after requesting residents to preserve water. I don't know if that's a first. That seems like a very strong first, as um, nobody can do fireworks because it's 115 degrees and it might start a wildfire. No water to be able to put out the fires. Businesses in Las Vegas are still shut because they aren't able to continue business about water, about running water, clean water. Las Vegas is in trouble. It can't be understated that these water woes won't spread to other areas, cities, other mega uh, cities. Get bad, dirty water, no water. Las Vegas, New Mexico. This is an article from CNN, February 25th. Talking about the historic lows of uh, Mexico City. There is a date, that is there a zero date. Day zero. Local media widely reported in early February that an official from a branch of Monagua said that without significant rain, day zero could arrive as early as June 26. Well, it is July 15th and it's raining like crazy in Mexico City.
no one's going to be prepared. How do you prepare without water? Just wait. Wait for society to rebuild itself. But without water, there's nothing that can be done. Yeah, day zero in a matter of months. It was in February. July, they have to be scraping by. Water is nowhere to be found. Dams are exposed in their banks as they dry up. NASA releases new penguin and egg image from James Webb Space Telescope. The new image shows two interacting galaxies that lie 326 mile, million light years from Earth. It's a penguin and egg. The oldest spiral galaxy at the center of the penguin and the compact elliptical galaxy at the left is the egg. This is the new near. A mid-infrared image from the James Webb Space Telescope taken to mark its second year of image space. NASA has released a stunning new image from the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, marking the two-year anniversary of the release of its first images. And the space agency is calling it Penguin and the Egg. What exactly are we looking at? Well, it is two interacting galaxies known jointly as ARP-142 that lie 326 million light years from Earth. They are 100,000 light years apart. It may sound far, but in astronomical terms, that's very close. In contrast, our Milky Way and the closest galaxy to us, the Andromeda Galaxy, are separated by 2.5 million light years. Penguin and A galaxies made their first pass sometime between 25 and 75 million years ago, NASA said in release. This, in turn, triggered a new star formation in the Penguin. Galactic mergers can cause galaxies to form thousands of new stars a year over millions of years. In the case of the penguin, NASA said, research suggests that about 100 to 200 stars have formed each year. This and many times more than what is happening in our own galaxy, where only roughly six to seven new stars form each year. It is the gift that keeps on giving, the James Webb Space Telescope. It has 18 individual mirrors that make up one giant one. That makes it a light-catching machine, allowing it to see some of the faintest objects and appear far back into the earliest times of the universe. The first image released by the James Webb Space Telescope shows thousands of galaxies and I think that life could be in one of these galaxies in one of these systems we aren't able to find ga uh, life in our own Milky Way we might be able to find life elsewhere it'll take time but who knows what the future holds. What is most important is that an outside life form contacts us. I think that would really put a lot of things in perspective for a lot of people realizing that we aren't alone in this universe. We are very, very much so not alone. There's life, water teeming everywhere we see. To think that life couldn't exist elsewhere in the universe, that would be ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Penguin and egg.
This is The Guardian by Lisa Cox. Uh, Africa's most resilient lion and his brother filmed making one and a half kilometer swim across dangerous African river. A team led by an Australian researcher captured the pair making the record breaking swim after two failed attempts. Try this. There you go. Sorry, it wasn't run, working for a minute. There's the land up here. Two lines here. Making a very aggressive and risky stride across this river is the Kazinga Channel in Uganda. A record breaking swim by two Lion Brothers across a predator filled African river has been documented by a team led by researcher by a researcher from an Australian university. The Two Male Lion Coalition was filmed crossing the Kanzinga Channel in Uganda at night using high-definition heat detection cameras on drones. After two failed attempts, the pair swam about one and a half kilometers to make it across the channel. One half of the duo was a 10-year-old local icon known as Jacob, who has survived several life-threatening incidents including the severing of one of his hind legs in a poacher's snare. Griffith University's Dr. Alexander Brack Polsky, who led the research, said Jacob really is a cat with nine lives. I bet all my belongings that we are looking at Africa's most resilient lion. He has been gored by a buffalo. His family was poisoned for lion body part trade. He was caught in a poacher's snare and finally lost his leg in another attempt poach, attempted poaching incident where he was caught in a steel trap. Damn. Raksolski says the fact Jacob and his brother Tibu have managed to survive as long as they have in a national park under significant human pressures, including from high poaching rates, was a feat in itself. Raksolski research has found that populations in the park has halved in the past five years due to a range of factors. They include several human-caused catastrophes, Poisoning by poachers and electrocution on a fence in the park among them. He said the impact had been particularly severe for the park's female lions. This population is skewing two males to one female, and that's the reason we suspect these lions have swum across the Gazinga Channel. Because they're searching for females, he said. He said it was just sad the animals were being pushed in this way by pressures created by humans. Brack Kolsky's team included... South African filmmaker Luke Ochis and said coordinators Boscow Atuk Watsi from Uganda and Oren Corneo from Belgium. Scientists from Griffith University and Northern Univer Arizona University worked on the research. Competition for lioness in the park is fierce and they lost a fight for female affection in the hours leading up to the swim. So it's likely the duo mounted the risky journal journey to get to the females on the other side of the channel. There is a small connecting bridge to the other side, but the presence of people was probably a deterrent for them. It is a massive journey.
by two lines. Fortunately, this line lost its leg and still able to swim across the channel with hind leg missing. Incredible. This is in Uganda. This happened in February. The article is from July. These Lion Brothers, these coalitions withstand time, but two Lion Brothers going to make, meet females, hopefully they find what they're looking for. But it's sad that they have to try to make this journey. Because, you know, lions don't like water too much. Seeing this is pretty incredible. At least 60 people missing and a landslide tragedy that swept buses away. A landslide in Nepal swept away two passenger buses from the highway into a nearby river. Rescue operations are ongoing, but the wreckage of, bus, the, the wreckage of the buses have not been found. 60 people missing. Landslide. Three survivors were rescued. They jumped from the bus as it was veering off. No additional survivors or traces of the wreckage are found yet, are yet found. The tragedy struck in the monsoon season when South Asia is inundated. With heavy rains and floods with, that trigger landslides. Tragedy. Some happy news. Giant panda gives birth to baby cub at Dutch Zoo, boosting the population of the endangered mammal. So, uh, if I recall, China gifts these panda bears, especially couples, as a gift. And, uh, if a baby panda is born, the agreement is that they would send the panda back to China before the age of four years old. A second cub was born about an hour later, but died shortly after the birth, the zoo said. The surviving cub is the second born at the Central Dutch Zoo. In 2020, a cub that was later named Fan Zing was born as a part of what was once known as China's Panda Diplomacy Program. Heat-related deaths continue to rise as record-breaking hot weather persists. While this has gone down a little bit in temperature across the country, still over triple digits in the southwest. We're starting to see Kansas, Oklahoma, starting to see temperatures of over 100 degrees. Nebraska will be next. Seeing 
massive temperature swaths across the country like we haven't seen before. We say that, we do mean that. We, we might have seen Las Vegas or parts of California at these temperatures before, but what we're talking about here is a lot more gruesome. We're seeing massive statewide heat waves. They're not going away. And at night, it's not like the temperature goes down that much. From thecooldown.com, extreme weather puts dam in imminent failure condition. We do not know if it will totally fail or if it will remain in place. This is the, uh, is this the Rapidan Dam? Yeah. The second worst flood in Minnesota's Rapidan Dam's 114 year history didn't destroy it, but put in the imminent failure condition. The Rapidan Dam is one of more than 90,000 dams nationwide across the United States to receive a D, or mediocre grade, from the American Society of Civil Engineers. Dam failures not only put the public at risk, they can also cost our economy billions of dollars in damages. Ninety thousand dams that are that received a D or a mediocre grade, and it's not that we're seeing you know like drought. We're seeing uh, we're seeing record flooding across the country as well. Seen lots of flood watches across the Midwest. Seen massive flooding across Lake Michigan, all in and around it. Best of heat warnings on the East Coast. Here, thunderstorms, heat, and flood watches for the Midwest. Best of heat warnings. And uh, fire weather, red flags, big red flags. Japan to mole setting target of 60 to 66 percent emissions cut by fiscal year 2035. Tokyo. Japan, cons Japan plans to consider setting a fresh target to slash its greenhouse gas emissions by between 50, 60 to 66 percent by fiscal year 2020-2035. Government official sources said Sunday as the country braces for another sweltering summer amid global warming.
Let's see. Gold mine collection of wheat from 100 years ago may help feed the world. So, I, 100 years ago, the plant scientist Arthur Watkins launched a remarkable project. Collected wheat from all across the planet. His persistence was exceptional, and a century year later, it is about to reap dramatic results. A UK-Chinese collaboration has sequenced the DNA of all 827 kinds of wheat assembled by Watkins that have been nurtured by the John Eines Center near Norwich for most of the past century. In doing so, scientists have created a genetic gold mine by pinpointing previously unknown genes that are now being used to create hardy varieties with improved yields that could help feed Earth's swelling population. Grains are now being developed that include wheat, which is able to grow in salty soil, with researchers at Punjab Agricultural University are working to improve disease resistance from seeds that they received from the John Innes Center. Other strains include those that would reduce the need for nitrogen fertilizers, the manufacture of which is a major source of carbon emissions. Nitrogen fertilizers. Big player. Very dangerous. And wheat has been a cornerstone of human civilization. In regions such as Europe, North Africa, large parts of Asia, and subsequently North America, its cultivation fed great empires from Egypt, ancient Egypt to the growth of modern Britain. This wheat was derived from wild varieties that were originally domesticated and cultivated in the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East 10,000 years ago. Many of these varieties and their genes have disappeared over the millennia, a process that, has, that was accelerated about a century ago as the science of plant breeding became increasingly sophisticated and varieties with properties that were then considered of no value were discarded. That is why the Watkins collection is so important, said Griffiths. It contains varieties that have been lost, but which will be invaluable in creating wheat that can provide healthy yields in the harsh conditions that now threaten agriculture. People like this made such a difference and no longer alive to be able to see what they've done, but pretty incredible. Arthur Watkins fought in the First World War uh, when he was 19 years old. And he survived and he was to remain in France to act as an assistant agricultural officer tasked with helping local farmers feed the troops who were still waiting to be shipped home. As inmates swelter, California prisons remain unprepared for extreme heat. The potential heat-related death of a prison inmate in California's Central Valley this week is focusing renewed attention on conditions within correctional institutes as extreme heat.
<sighs> Many facilities are not equipped with central air conditioning, updated ventilation, shade structures, or backup generators to power fans and other cooling devices during outages, according to a 2023 report by the UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs and the Ella Baker Center for Human Rights. Must get insanely hot in these prisons. By mid-century, heat waves that result in public health impacts are projected to last two weeks longer in the Central Valley. Red alert issued in Croatia as country swelters through heat wave. Croatia as well is seeing a triple digit or higher weather. Hungary as well, Italy are all seeing temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius or over 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Degrees. Whoa. Algeria, 115 degrees. Over in India, this is getting insane. I think temperature is over 100 degrees. In the nighttime, it's only about 90 degrees. It's no, there's no rest from the heat be able to find heat Australia and South Africa Argentina some parts of Canada besides that like most of the world is seeing a resurgence in heat The hotter it gets, the more chances of wildfires beginning. Slovakia. At least 15 hurt as storm hits music festival. Uh, there's been a few videos. There was a storm that hit a Mexico political rally that injured a lot of people. It just seems to be that, you know, the storms are getting stronger. These festivals and other places that, uh, that host a lot of people, they get, that are popped up. Wind can do some damage. 
and really do some harm. The event was called off on Friday evening. Based on available information, inspecting all the structures could not be done in less than inspecting all the structures could not be done in less than 24 hours, which makes it impossible to continue with the festival program. Storms also cause damage to railway lines. Like getting hit with debris, getting hit with uh, pieces of the stage falling. It's terrible. Twenty twenty four could be world's hottest year as June breaks records. Last month was the hottest June on records. Is coming up okay, yeah. Greenhouse gas emissions from burning fossil fuels are the main cause of climate change. Twenty twenty four being the hottest recorded year after it's going to be a thirteenth consecutive month. Space.com, Ben Turner. The last 12 months have broken records like never before. Earth exceeds 1.5 degrees Celsius warming every month for an entire year. Every month has broken the temperature record of the previous for the past 12 months. And the signs of climate breakdown are already here, a new analysis shows. Earth has broken temperature records for 13 consecutive months, with every month registering temperatures of 1.5 degrees Celsius, higher than the pre-industrial averages, according to a new report. Every month since June 2023 has been hotter than the one preceding it, making the global average temperature between 20, June 2023 and June 2024 1.6 degrees, 6. 1.64 degrees Celsius greater than it was before the Industrial Revolution when humans started burning fossil fuels to release huge quantities of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Twelve months streak was also in part driven by El Nino, a climate cycle where waters in the tropical eastern Pacific grow warmer than usual. It is an alarming trend. We're seeing month after month be hotter than the last. With hotter oceans come stronger hurricanes, cyclones. So seeing great bleaching 
all across the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico, from Brazil to New York. And then we come on the other side of the globe in the Pacific. Then going on and on, just around the world, we're seeing huge patches of coral bleaching. Spreads this disease or coral reef when they lose their algae, it is equivalent to heat stroke in a human being. The Northeast is looking deadly. It's starting to ramp up in areas of the planet where it hasn't before. Off of Mexico, and uh, off the coast of the east, eastern seaboard. Future risk of coral bleaching set to intensify globally. An international team of researchers led by the University of Adelaide has projected future marine heat waves will cause coral reefs to be at severe risk of bleaching for longer periods than previously seen. Constant bleaching is that all we're going to see is everything below us dead, bone white, getting eaten alive by predators as the warm, the water warms the bottom of the ocean, which the temperature would be colder, warming up. Could cause devastating catastrophes all across the planet, such as snow crabs, Alaskan snow crabs going extinct. The species going extinct now that we don't even know. But for the ones that we do know, like snow, Alaskan snow crabs, they were in the billions. Now they're not. They haven't been spotted. As far as I've been seeing, I have not heard any news report saying that they found snow crabs. Alarming. Seeing birds, other animals that are dying in large numbers due to bird flu, H5N1, for most of the part. Disease, though, carries down with all over the world. Transferred by water, transferred by particles in the air. We do when we have global ocean heat waves that are causing bleaching in our coral reefs. That our coral reefs act like uh, fence against hurricanes. It helps. Uh, cause a lot of uh, a lot of factors that play into it for a hurricane to be stronger, to have less coral reefs, less less uh, objects in its pathway slowing it down. The warmer temperatures we've seen what happened with Hurricane Barrel. It started in Brazil. Went into Texas, and then went up to Michigan. These are, this is going to be the most insane hurricane season of recorded history, period. There's no other way around it. It already is the record-breaking hurricane season. But just having hurricanes that can just pop up suddenly on coast, uh, a disturbance, not even a named storm, bringing three to five inches of rain, lightning, and winds. A 
We're in trouble. Unfortunately, marine species in these regions are already living at temperatures near the upper tolerance levels and so are particularly ill-equipped to adapt to accelerated climate change, making them highly vulnerable to extinction. I apologize if I don't seem like myself. It's been a rough weekend. But getting better. I really threw my back out over the weekend. And uh, about two or three days. Like I, I don't think I experienced back pain like that before. But feeling better. Actually, twist now and bend and pick stuff up. Might be a little slower because I am getting older, but still here. Articles a year old. Opinion. We built our world for a climate that no longer exists. I feel like I had an episode over the weekend. I was diagnosed bipolar type 1 been complicated and difficult but I just I have not been feeling myself lately it's been fairly difficult to uh, do normal things that I would normally do it makes things harder more difficult My father-in-law had an accident over the weekend where he fell. Not his head or break anything, but helping him up, I ended up hurting my back. Why 911 is called when you need to help elderly people up? Because it's got to take care of yourself first. So, just trying to ice and heat the back, and just trying very hard 
not to scream during this stream. Schools are being closed because they're too hot. It's insane what we're seeing across the planet. Not just one area, one city, one state, one province. It's most. <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible what we're seeing here. These uh, heat storms creep up. Next thing you know, it's 100 degrees. For people that are living without AC or living outside, homeless, I don't know how they can survive. It's terrible outside. In some places of the country, it's just unforgiving, brutal heat. Hopefully, temperature subsides a little bit. And we are able to... able to mitigate a lot of the a lot of the changes that of heat waves can bring drought lightning it can be a lot of different things Seventy percent of renewable energy in Texas comes from. Wait, I said that wrong. I'm just having a really hard time lately, struggling a lot lately. Just, it feels like my body had a complete shock and went into like a traumatized mode, and then I just felt. It's like, I would consider them, since it is bipolar type 1, I would consider them mini episodes, mini struggles. Makes it very difficult. Think straight. Makes it very difficult. Focus. It's not just the ADHD and the OCD. But believing certain things that you probably wouldn't because you're sick. But I wouldn't wish on anyone. So I'm sorry if a uh, show becomes inconsistent at times because I am not well. Sometimes I won't be able to just even get through a, you know, an article. Feels like a deep humiliation that I can't shake. I just have been feeling myself. Well, it's been, it's been fun, but I, I think I'm going to call it early here today. It's very humiliating to have to call it in early. I really don't want to, but I don't think that I have the capacity to continue today. I still feel I'm reeling from shock of an episode over the weekend.
I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for watching. Maybe, maybe tomorrow will be a better day. Like I'm having a hard time doing what I normally do. Just picking an article and running with it and trying to link it. Another article and it's just brutal feeling. ABC News, Australia. Deadly honeybee parasite Borao mite spreads further south, detected at Vega for the first time. See the mite. Right on the bee's head. A commercial beekeeper fears the destructive honeybee parasite Baro Baro Baroa mite is spreading through southern New South Wales faster than surveillance and detection systems can manage. Wildfire evacuation ordered issued for properties east of Quinsnall. British Columbia. The fire is said to be burning about 70 hectares in size and is burning out of control. I try to include happy stories every once in a while, but I don't know. Today I'm, I feel horrible. I feel real horrible. It, it's not going away. Like, it feels like trauma. It feels like a deep humiliation that uh, came over me that made me act in a certain way. I can't snap out of it. Sick. Makes me worried. Maybe... Maybe tomorrow would be a better day. As of right now, to, one day today, my head feels strange. Feels like I went through a lot of trauma. I don't know how. I don't know why I can't. 
But it's like the chaos of the storm in my mind. It just creeps up and boom. I don't feel like myself again. Very onset and sudden. And it might be even bewildering and offensive and angering people. Because I lose control. It makes it difficult to be consistent in streaming. It makes it difficult to be consistent in a lot of places in life. Emergency workers uncover dozens of bodies in a Gazan city district after Israeli assault. Hopefully tomorrow is a better day for me. I'm just not feeling feel strange. If uh, bipolar type one, it can happen. Strange days can happen. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I enjoy streaming. I enjoy sharing this information we find ourselves with. Colorado reports three more presumed cases of bird flu. Cases which have not yet been confirmed were identified in farm workers calling infected birds. The risk to the public remains low, health officials said. This is the newest uh, human cases of H5N1. Is this H5N1? Yeah. The outbreak has been spreading among dairy farms since at least March and 152 dairy herds in 12 states. Waiting for my broadcast to stabilize. I apologize. There it goes. It was a uh, starting to see a lot of dropped frames. I was hoping that I wasn't about to disconnect on Twitch. When disconnected, it starts a new 
video, new stream. Not feeling okay. Don't know what it is. You can really just lose yourself. I thank you for watching so far. If you haven't already, please click the follow button on for the channel. It helps me out immensely. As of right now, I used to have a YouTube channel with 6,500 subscribers. I'm starting over on Twitch. I like changes so far, but... Not doing... Not doing very well today. I do apologize for the inconsistency. It's, um... Not some people would want to... Hear about again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your interest in these topics that I share. Most of all, thank you for participating for. Subscribing to the channel. So really, I don't think I can keep going on. I don't know if I lost it or if I just feel humiliated is this constant feeling that never goes away of deep seated humiliation i am struggling to find out what Not a good day. Thank you for joining me to call it here. It's, um, I'm not getting any better. I'm not feeling any better. And it's just, it just washes over me and it just, I can't focus. I can't. Please take care.